Okay, 5.3 solving systems with linear equations, this time by elimination. So once again, to uh, start this out, remember a system of linear equations is when you have two, a set of two or more linear equations in the same variable. And that means, for instance, you might have um, 3x plus y equals 2 and 4x plus 7 equals 5. Okay, maybe you just have x's and y's in it. A solution is when an ordered pair you have an ordered pair that will actually satisfy and make both of those equations true. We'll see that here in a minute, so let's take a look at some of these. Um, solving a system of limiting linear equations by elimination. Let's go ahead and solve here. When you're going to use elimination, really what you're looking for is you're looking for opposites in your equation, okay? Because what you can do is add these equations together. Uh, systems kind of based on the premise, if you have, um, let's say we have a statement like 1 plus 2 equals 3 and then maybe like 4 plus 7 equals 11. Well, you can add true, two, true, or multiple true equations and get a true result. So like 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 plus 7 is also 5, and, excuse me, is not 5, is 9, okay? And then 5 plus 9 is actually 14, and notice 3 plus 11 is 14. So by adding these two equations downward, you get a true statement going horizontally or sideways, okay? So you can do that with equations also. If I look at the, these two equations, 4x plus 8y equals 20, and then negative 4x plus 2y equals negative 30, I'm looking at the numbers in front of the variables, so 4 and negative 4, positive 8 and positive 2. I'm looking for opposite. So 4 and negative 4 are opposites. They both have, are attached to x. So by adding these, 4x plus negative 4x, that gives me 0x. Those cancel out. 8y and 2y is 10y. And 20 and negative 30 is negative 10. Notice I've eliminated x. Okay? Now, if you actually add two equations together and you don't eliminate one of your variables, then you've wasted your time uh, when you're trying to solve a system like this. Okay? But I've eliminated x. So now I can just solve what's remaining. 10y equals negative 10. So we divide both sides of my equation by 10. You get 1y is negative 1. And if y is negative 1, I can substitute that back into one of my other two equations. Let's say I use the top one, for instance. 4x plus 8y equals 20. I can substitute negative 1 in for y. You get 4x plus 8 times negative 1 y becomes negative 1 equals 20. That now allows me to solve 4x minus 8 is 20. Add 8 to both sides. We get 4x equals 28. And then divide both sides by 4. You get 1x is 7. So you get the order pair. x is 7. y is negative 1. And there's your solution. And Remember, a, a solution to a system, if you try it out, substitute the 7, negative 1 for x and y in your original equation. So 4 times 7 is 28, plus 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. 28 and negative 8 is 20. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28, plus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 28 and negative 2 is negative 30. Hey, it works. All right, so let's try another one here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. We have 8x plus y is equal to negative 16, and then negative 3x plus y is negative 5. So looking for opposites, well, 8 and negative 3 are both attached to x, so 8 and negative 3, they're opposite signs, but they're not opposites. You would need um, 8 and negative 8 or 3 and negative 3. We don't have that, so that won't work. Positive 1y and positive 1y. Well, those aren't opposites either. So what can we do? Well, we can make, make them opposites. Okay, so 1 and 1, uh, they're the same number. So if I multiply one of my equations, either the top or the bottom, by negative 1, then what happens is it changes all the signs of everything in here. So it's like distributing a negative 1 to each term even that one over there, okay, the negative 5. So negative 1 times negative 3x is positive 3x. 
Negative 1 times positive y is negative y. And negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. Okay? And then we can just bring over the top equation. I just do that just so I can see them stacked together there. So 8x plus y is equal to negative 16. And so note now, I actually have opposites, positive y and negative y. Those are 0. 8x and 3x is 11x. Negative 16 and 5, that's negative 9. Oops, I'm sorry, that's negative 11. Okay, we're going to solve by dividing both sides by 11. We get 1x is negative 1. And if x is negative 1, I can substitute that value back into one of my other two equations. So it's, I'm going to use the top one, and I'll write it down here. So 8x plus y is negative 16. I'm going to substitute negative 1 in for x. So 8 times negative 1 plus y is negative 16. Gives me negative 8 plus y is 16, negative 16. Just add 8 to both sides. I get 1y is negative 8. Okay, so I get the ordered pair, negative 1, negative 8. And you can test it, but it does work out. Now some people, I've heard, had some students say, well, why don't you just subtract the two equations? You could have done 8x minus 3x. Well, actually, it'd have to be 8x minus negative 3x, and then y minus y, and then negative 16 minus a negative 5. And those double negatives and everything in there, that really a lot of times leads to a lot more mistakes. So what I try to do is get opposites so that I can add throughout the problem. It just takes care of a lot of mistakes there. Okay, let's go ahead and try another uh, couple here. So we're going to solve by elimination. Now in this case, notice this equation uh, when I'm looking at it, 8x, 14y, and 4, negative 6x, negative 7y, and negative 10. 8 and negative 6 are not opposites. 14 and negative 7 are not opposites. And the constants really don't matter when we're looking for opposites. But I look at this and I say, well, man, I could take 2, two of the bottom equation and get a, ne a negative 14 if I do two set negative 7s. But I also look at it and I go, man, on the top equation, 8, 14, and 4, I can reduce that equation or I can cut it in half. I can take a 2 out of each of these. Really, what you're doing is multiplying it by one half. But I just kind of, oops, I just kind of think of it as like reducing it. When I take two out of eight x, I get four x. When I take two out of fourteen y, I get seven y. And when I take two out of four, I get two. Okay, so really, what you've done is you you've taken half of the eight x plus fourteen y equals four. But by doing that. No, you now have opposites, 7y and negative 7y. And so I can add straight down, 4x and negative 6x is negative 2x. 7y and negative 7y, that's zeroed out. Okay, that's gone. And then 2 and negative 10 is negative 8. Now I divide by negative 2 on both sides because they're multiplying by negative 2. 1x is 4. So by reducing that, you made your life really easy there. Okay, so x is 4. I'm now going to take and plug that in or substitute it into one of my equations. In fact, in this case, I'm going to use the bottom one. Negative 6x minus 7y equals negative 10. I'm going to plug or substitute 4 in for x. So negative 6 times 4 minus 7 times y equals negative 10. So we just put that 4 right in for x. Okay. And then... This is negative 24, negative 6 times 4, minus 7y, negative 10. We'll go ahead and add 24 over to both sides. So we have negative 7y is equal to 14, and then we'll divide both sides by negative 7. So y is equal to negative 2. So we get the ordered pair 4, negative 2. You can always check it to make sure you got it correct. It should make a true statement in both of those. All right. Now, if you're like, well, I wanted to multiply by 2 here, you could have multiplied the second equation by 2. You would have been just fine. just would have been a, um, some bigger numbers you're dealing with. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this other one here. Negative 7x minus 8y equals 9. Negative 4x plus 9y equals negative 22. Mm, the x's don't have opposites. The y's don't have opposites. I cannot reduce either equation. So in this case, I've got to look at it and go, well, if I want to get rid of x's, I have to think about what 7 and 4 both go into. So they both make 28. Like if you multiply them together, the smallest number they both go into is 28. So you can either try to make a 28 out of both of those, or I could look at the 8 and the 9, and I could say, well, they both make, well, they both go into 72. So I can either make a 28 or a 72. 28 x's or 72 y's. It sounds nicer to make 28 x's. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. Okay, and i got to erase that line. So there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to multiply the top equation by something that will make negative 7x28. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to multiply by 4. Now by doing that, I don't actually get a negative 28. I get a positive 28. I'm sorry, I don't get a positive 28. I get a negative 28x. Negative, or 4 times negative 7 is negative 28x. 4 times negative 8y is negative 32y. And then don't forget to go 4 times the last number. That's a common mistake. So 4 times 9 is 36. And then I'm going to multiply the bottom one by, well, I have to multiply by 7. However, I need to make it a positive 28. So negative times, this has to be negative as well. So negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. I needed that positive so that I can cancel out right here. Negative 7 times 9 is negative 63y. And negative 7 times negative 22 is negative, oops, excuse me, is positive 154. And now I can add them. Okay, negative 28x and positive 28x is 0. Negative 32 and negative 63 is negative 95. No, I'm sorry, that's no, that's right. That's uh, negative 95. Okay. And then 36 and 154 is 190. Oops, I forgot my Y there. So that's negative 95 Y's. And then 190. Okay. Divide both sides by negative 95. And I get 1Y is negative 2. So Y is negative 2. I'm going to substitute that negative 2 into one of my equations. Um, I'm going to take the bottom one again. Negative 4x um, plus 9y is equal to negative 22. I'll substitute that negative 2 in for y, so negative 4x plus 9. So rather than y, I have negative 2 equals negative 22. Okay, so that's negative 4x minus 18 equals negative 22. Add 18 to both sides. And negative 4x is equal to negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. I get 1x is positive 1. So x is 1, so I get the order pair 1, negative 2. And once again, you can double check it by substituting it in, but it will work out there. Okay, for special cases, cases, and then I'll probably add one little uh, uh, reminder there. Um, well, first on special cases, remember the two special cases. If you were to graph them, you could have parallel lines. Parallel lines is no solution. That's one of our special cases. No solution. Okay. The other special case is where you have, whoops, excuse me. Well, you have to be able to touch my screen without switching it, okay? Is where you have the same line. And in that case, if, if it's the same line, it is infinitely many solutions. All right, so infinitely many solutions and no solution. Okay, so when I'm looking at it in terms of algebraically, I don't want to have to graph it to see if they're parallel or the same line. I'm going to go ahead and try to eliminate here. So I look at the top equation. I can't reduce it. Um, I don't have threes on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the bottom equation by 3. And by doing that, that's going to give me 3x plus 3y 
equals 9. And then if I take that, first, that top equation, negative 3x minus 3y equals 4, you'll notice now I have opposites. And in fact, I have opposites on the x's and I have opposites on the y. So negative 3x and positive 3x is 0, and negative 3y and positive 3y is 0. So on, on this side of the equation, I have 0 x's and 0 y's. And that is equal to 4 and 9, which is 13. Or in other words, I have 0 equals 13. That is false. Oops, that is not how you spell false either. There we go, false. Okay, 0 does not equal 13. Okay, so this is a no solution. Remember, when the variables cancel, and the result is false, then it equals no solution. All right. Let's take another look here at a different one. I'll kind of separate this. I kind of squeezed myself a little by doing that, but that allows me to draw a little. So there we go. Okay, uh, I take a look at this in the other one, and actually I look at this one. I can reduce the top equation. I could take a 2 out of each of those, so I'm going to do that. Uh, that's going to become 1x. That's going to become 4y. And that's going to become 3. And actually the bottom equation I could take a 5 out of. So that's going to become negative x. This one's going to become uh, negative 20 divided by 5 is negative 4y. And this one's going to become negative 15 divided by uh, 5 is negative 3. Okay, so let's uh, put the result over here just really quick. So we get x plus 4y equals 3. And then we have x minus 4y, or negative x, excuse me, minus 4y equals negative 3. You'll notice 0, 0, 0, 0 equals 0. That is true. Everything canceled out. That is infinitely many solutions. Okay? Infinitely many solutions. And what's happened is um, when the variables cancel, and the result is true. In that case, it's infinitely many solutions. Alrighty, so hey, I need to do just one more really quick note, and I'm not going to do a whole problem on it, but I do just want to point out um, something I was just thinking about. If you have, say, a system, and we won't even uh, go into solving it, but let's say you have like 4x, equals 7 plus 2y. And then you have um, 3x plus 2y equals 5. And you're like, well, how do I solve that? Look, I've got an a I don't even have x's and y's on the same side. Well, the way you solve it is the first step is you get x's and y's on the same side. So I would rewrite this top equation as 4x, and I would subtract this 2y over to that side. So minus 2y equals 7. And then I keep this one just like so. 3x plus 2y equals 5. And then now they're stacked up. They look all nice and pretty. And uh, you can solve. Okay? Um, just a uh, quick uh, note to you. Uh, we don't need to solve that one. In fact, it would probably come out really ugly. But I just wanted to make a note of that for you. Okay. Well, I hope that helps. Good luck.